When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband, Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton is a glorious sandstone house dating originally from the 1540s. It is known as Britain's finest manor house, and it is full of wonderful treasures collected by Luke's ancestors. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. On these trips, I'll be meeting other owners who manage these large houses and estates, as well as some of the fantastic people who work there too. With them, I'll be exploring the history, the landscapes, and the innovations of generations past and present. And I'm particularly keen to meet the remarkable women who, like me, have married into these families, bringing new ideas, energy, and more than a touch of style. I'll be sure to roll up my sleeves and help out with a few jobs along the way. Is there a snake in here? Yeah. What? What? So please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. I'm here at Eiford Manor today, and I'm visiting our great friends, William and Marianne. I've been to the house before, but I've never properly explored the gardens. So that is what I'm about to do. Nestled in a secluded valley on the Wiltshire-Somerset border in southwest England, Eiford Manor boasts one of Britain's most beautiful historic gardens. During my visit, I'll be in deep water with the head gardener, Troy. Is there a snake in here? Yeah. What? What? Getting artistic in the kitchen with head chef, Jack. There Look at that. And enjoying the glorious British summer weather with William. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Good so to see nice you. to see you. Yeah. Now, am I just about to walk under the Eiford Wisteria? Well, it's certainly one of them, but it's the <laughs> earliest. This is um, about 1820s. Wisteria only came to the UK in 1815. So this is definitely one of those very early plants and it has an amazing scent and it produces amazing flowers and it's very happy on the south face I of mean, the Bath Stone. So I'm just trying to do my maths here. So basically, this is 200 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the American in me, I need to date everything. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find out if it's older than my country or not. I mean, but 200 years old, incredible. It's an awesome plant. All anyway. Right, I'm gonna remember this moment. Let's go get your coffee. Okay, great. <laughs> Well, you've picked a really lovely day for me to come. Thank you. It's um, lovely to <laughs> see you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me here when the sun is shining. So tell me a little bit more about why your gardens are so special. Well, they've got a very rich history. I, they go back to medieval times when this was a rich factory owner's house with uh, a factory at the other end. It was two buildings. And then it was really the Georgians who did the terraforming. So all the terraces you see behind us yes, yes. Uh, and up into the hills, those are Georgian terraces. We're talking between 1730, I suppose, and 1820, that sort of period. And the Georgians were the great builders, weren't they? They, they didn't think twice about just cutting in and building something new. And then it's Harold Pito who comes in 1899 down the hill over there on his bicycle. And he's looking for somewhere to settle down, looking for the perfect house. 
And here he finds this jewel of a little sort of smart Georgian villa at the bottom of a steeply wooded hill facing south and with a little stream, a river in front. And I think when you look out that way, you kind of sense maybe he felt he was on the north shore of Lake Como. Absolutely. Or maybe Lake Garda, or somewhere like that. Yes, yes, You know, absolutely. he was in the sort of Villa Bellagio, looking out over his <laughs> beautiful, glistening lakeside, but crucially, setting it in England, his beloved England, because he was an Edwardian Englishman. So he's really the creator of this, of these gardens. He's yes. the augmenter. Right, he's he the augmenter. He takes a Georgian garden and plays with it and turns it into something else. He's not a capability brand sweeping everything away to create something new. He is somebody who augments, who builds another layer of history for another one to come on top of him, that's us, and another one on top of us. And it's that extraordinary rich sort of sandwich, I suppose you would say. Well, I um, like that uh, word. Yeah, of course you <laughs> um, But you know, that extraordinary sandwich, the filling is getting bigger. And I suppose the failure is when you're the one who puts the top on the sandwich. Yeah. Because you can, you're not continuing You're, you're not continuing You're wrapping it, it up. Yep, exactly. Well, my husband wanted me to mention to you that we do have a connection. And I don't know if you're aware of this. I'm not. But my father-in-law, Sandwich, yes. speaking of Sandwich, so the 11th Earl of Sandwich, my father-in-law's mother was Rosemary Pito. How extraordinary. Yeah. So her great uncle was Harold. I've always wondered whether Harold Pito had an influence or vice versa or knew Mapperton. Exactly. I've always wondered that. Because Mapperton's Italianate Gardens were created by Ethel Labasher and they were created over seven years from 1920 mm. to 1927. Mm. So Harold Peter was still around, right? He was definitely around. He died in 1933. He would have been, I would think, by that stage in his career, advising yes. uh, rather than doing. He was in his 60s and early 70s. But I bet he went to visit. I bet he went there. These gardens are 20 years prior. So this is 1900 to 1910. Yep. The cloister, which we'll see later, is 1914. Right. Um, pretending to be 12, 15, because nothing you see in this garden is quite as it seems. Don't trust anything. Don't That's trust anything. That's my best okay, piece of advice okay. for this garden. The gardens at Eiford may largely be the brainchild of one man, but it's William's parents, Elizabeth and John Cartwright Hignett, who have lovingly kept Harold Pito's vision alive for the past 50 years. My mother came to Eiford in 1965. She bought Eiford um, from a nephew of Harold Pito, and she basically spent 50 years restoring Eiford. I mean, she picked it up as a 25-year-old single woman. What? Which is kind of... Um, 20... In the 60s is kind of crazy. So your mother bought Iford, age 25, yep. and took over the running of it. That's right. I mean, she was moving her family from an enormous uh, house called Aino Park. Beautiful. Yeah, Sir yeah, yeah, of course. House. Moved down here. A um, bit of a downsizing, if you can call it that. Um, <laughs> still. Um, downsizing, nevertheless. And so she moved in. She married my father in 1979. I think it was probably one of the best things that happened to Iford in the last 50 years, because he then poured his energies into this garden for 40 years and restored the buildings and the structures so that now we're in a position to take it on for the next 50 years. Exactly. Uh, so you grew up here. Condition. You yeah, grew up here watching your parents run this. Exactly right. Because this is, you know, not only is this a, a lot to take on, of course, but the gardens. Mm. So the gardens are what people come and see. And I actually yes. haven't seen them yet. So what I want to do right now is go and explore these. Let's go Maybe get my hands a little bit dirty too. Absolutely. Great. <laughs> Harold Pito called these gardens paradise, and I can see why. I'm having a little wander, and there's just so much to see. I mean, it, this garden is, is, you know, terraced on so many different levels. And when you go from one level to the next, it completely changes. The gardens are planted over two and a half acres and are tended by a team of gardeners and volunteers who keep them in full bloom. It is incredible. It's just magical. And there's so many places dotted around the gardens that you can just find a spot sort of contemplate because it's so peaceful it's serene the smells are incredible 
And again, it's just an opportunity to find a spot, sit down, and just be. I'm heading up to see Troy, the head gardener. Troy is obviously an expert here at Iford. I kind of don't know where I'm going, but I'm gonna head up the path right here. Hi. Hello. Oh my goodness. I found you. <laughs> yes. I'm now in the Japanese garden, is that right? Japanese or oriental garden? Or oriental. There's so many different layers of this garden. I mean, and I don't just mean by the way that it's built up. It's, there are so many different sort of compartments, there I is, guess, if you is. like. What I find fascinating here is you literally walk six yards behind you and you've traveled like 6,000 miles to Europe. That's, yeah. that's like the Roman Appian way. And here we are in, in Japan. Right, that's where I just was. So why is it that there are so many, what was it with Harold Pito? Mm. He, he purposely did this to create these sort of different elements throughout. Yeah. It was a genius, I think, you know, because there's these moments, but he doesn't try to separate them. They're very much linked, but it feels still effortless. You know, it doesn't feel awkward moving from one space to the other. No. I don't know how he manages to achieve that because it's one of the most difficult aspects of garden design, if you like, the transitions. But I mean, he went to all these places, so he traveled to Japan. I think in about 1895, very early on really. He spent uh, a few weeks there and brought back obviously the ideas and some of the things that he saw there. Right, so this is kind of like a little grand tour. Mm, Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like when I walk around. So Troy, tell me how long have you been here as head gardener? So he's, uh, I've been here just about two years as head okay. gardener. But I mean, I knew, I've known Eiford for a long time. It's. Um, the way it nestles in the landscape so beautifully was the first thing that struck me. I used to walk along the river um, about 25 years ago. Um, oh my goodness. So it's lovely to be here so, now in the garden. In the garden. Okay, so I, you probably get asked this all the time, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, what is your, do you have a favorite part of the garden? I think it is probably here. Oh, I think oh good. It is. I think it, <laughs> there's something different about this, this, this space. You know, it's not about the obvious. Right. It's about the orchestration of the greens, the dappled light, the sound of the water there, the coolness, the temperature changes dramatically, you know, just stepping into this, this space. So, yeah, I think here is it's, one of it's my favourite places. It's got, it's got all those elements. So what can I do to help you? Well, to, yeah, well, today <laughs> I'm, well, I'm cutting, these, <laughs> I'm cutting these irises down today. These are right. a lovely Japanese water iris, but I think I'm okay continuing with that. Okay. What would be really useful, if you don't mind getting into the, pop, in, into the water, I love water. Okay, I love doing, well. I mean, like how far do you want me to go? Well, <laughs> it would be really nice to, to I've got a net, uh, we can skim off all of this kind of floating, oh. floating leaves, which okay. would be lovely. Fantastic, well, I, okay, well, did you lay these out for me? I did. Oh, X. I oh thought you might, uh, you I might. I have to have waders <laughs> on. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna put these on. Now, I'll grab the net. Great, okay, fantastic. Super. So I'm just gonna put these on. There we go. How do I look? <laughs> All right, Troy, I'm ready. So I suppose, suppose wobble those ones. Okay, but I'm going, I am <laughs> going, going in. in. Stepping I'm going in. in. I'm stepping into the unknown. Okay, that's a bit, mm -hmm. okay. I'm stepping in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, there we go. Me and water. We're, we do like each other. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. Watch the, um, the deep bit. Where's the detail? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm just, all this. Yes, please. Okay, okay. All this, okay, super. Just like a surface skim. Surface, surface, so a little bit higher up. Yeah, and probably the net a bit more horizontal. So okay. that's it, yeah, like, and just kind of drop in and then. So, so it's not over the edge. I think that was my issue. Okay, that's not a very good job. Do Perfect. That's really? Okay, okay yeah. so now and where do I put just it? Sort of swivel round and flick it onto the edge. I'm just curious, these they don't have any holes in them, do they? It's <laughs> feeling a bit it's feeling a bit cold. 
Okay, so slab, so it's like a pancake, right? Yeah. Okay. On here. Yeah. Thank you. One, two, three. Okay. And you just carry on? And then I can just, I don't yeah, have to flip it back that's around. Fine, no. Okay, so I'm gonna go under here. Okay, great. Okay. So am I, how fast do you normally do this? Well, we like to do it every week and yeah. probably about two hours. So it's, it's quite a commitment. But I think that surface, the clarity of the water, yeah. is quite important. And because we're in there, we are stirring it up, but that all settles. That, that all settles, yeah. the, the stirrup. Okay, yeah, wow, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna be here, Troy, for like two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've got the weeds, uh, the leaves here, but also some of that blanket weed as well, which Okay, which so I am trying to get the leaves in, yes? Yes, yeah. oh, Okay, I see a dragonfly there. Oh, so much wildlife, it's great in here. This year we've seen so many things. There's frogs, toads, newts, snakes. Wait, I, I'm sorry, say that again? <laughs> Wait, are there, no, no, I'm fine with frogs, I'm fine with toads, fine with newts, I swim with them. Snakes, I have an issue. Are there snakes in here? We've seen snakes swimming in here. <gasps> okay, they're, okay. They're safe ones, they're only grass snakes. They're just grass, I didn't know grass I snakes think. could you think, Troy? <laughs> you're you're putting me into snakes. I have a, I have, I do have a fear of snakes and cows, but they're they're not like gonna attack me, right? You just might scoop one up in your net. Oh yeah, that's wrong. What? <laughs> what? Shut up! Is there a snake in here? Oh my gosh! I I think. Stephen, did you really see a snake? You did. Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Sorry, Troy. <laughs> Coming up on American Viscountess at Iford Manor, I'll be going on a tour around the garden with the owner, William. This is the wow moment right It kind here. of is. This is wow. Kind of is. 